This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. It's so great to have you with us. Topping news controversy is brewing within the local government system on Grand Bahama. As a newly elected representative and a former representative are locked in a dispute over a set of keys for a building. Kimberly Mullings has those details. Just over a month after local government elections on June 22nd, and already a local community is in an uproar. Three names were on the ballot for the Williams Russell Town community, which falls under the Pinders Point Township. Incumbent Antoinette Russell, who served the community for the past 12 years, went up against newcomer Lenise Williams. Williams emerged victorious. Since then, Williams, the newly elected representative, has been trying to gain access to the community center, but has been denied. The keys are said to be in the possession of former councillor Antoinette Russell. I called her and asked her if we could have a meeting in the community center. Her reply to me was, the center has nothing to do with Williamstown. It's a Russell Town building. But I went to two older persons that lives in the town and I asked them to give me the story on the building. They said, growing up, they told Rock to build the building along with the Catholic Church. After the Catholic Church pulled out, they gave the building to the community. And now she's saying the building is owned by two older persons that live in Russelltown. Members of the community say siblings Sylvair and Carrie Russell are claiming to be the owners of the property, but have yet to produce any legal documents. Leonard Williams, who has lived in Williamstown his entire life, was the first local government representative for Williams Russelltown, and he is terribly upset over the dispute. For you to just now say that this belongs to Anne or whoever she gave the keys to, I think is very, very wrong. You know, she lost. She was uh, beaten fairly and squarely. And I think it's only right for her, because it's local government, not Anne Russell government, she should have turned over everything to the newly elected member of Williams and Russelltown. The Williams Russelltown community has since come together to join forces after being denied entry to the community center, which is said to have been built by the residents who once worshipped there since it was originally St. Jude's Catholic Church. Sister of Antoinette Russell, Agnes Woodside, is in disbelief that her sister would allow a set of keys to create such a divide among the community. After Nenise won, she went to her for the key. She told Nenise, uh, if Nenise wanted to use this building, she told Nenise, she will have to pay. So she said, who? She said, pay her. One of the oldest residents, 82-year-old Charles Williams, says coming to a resolution should be simple. I would not rest until I see that key turning over to the Russelltown and Williamstown. Uh, someone in Williamstown, I mean Russelltown, should have a set of keys, and someone in Williamstown will have a set of keys. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Now, since then, ZNS News has reached out to Antoinette Russell, who claims she has no knowledge of any issues regarding the use of the community center and denies having the keys for the building. Our news team also contacted Administrator Brenda Colbrook, who says that the Chief Counsel of the West Grand Bahama District, Kevin Morris, and Chairperson for the Pinders Point Township, Jacqueline Russell, have plans to meet with both parties in hopes of reaching an amicable resolution. In other news, fire officials on Grand Bahama are advising residents to be on alert and to make safety a priority. In this report, the local fire chief outlines the measures one must take when faced with a fire and also ways to avert a fire emergency. Italia Hall reports. Last year, the Royal Bahamas Police Force Fire Department on Grand Bahama recorded a total of 404 fire calls with an estimated damage of $4,773,118. There were a number of injuries as a result of burns recorded as well. Fire officials on Grand Bahama outlining the process when persons call to report a fire. First, they would usually speak with the dispatcher who would then relay that information to the fire team while they are en route to the location. Inspector Eli Arisker says there are some vital questions a dispatcher would ask when there's a fire emergency. Sometimes persons ask, why are you tell ask me what's, what's my name, what's my date of birth, all this. But these are pertinent information that we need in order for our trucks to be able to respond properly and get the exact location. Now firefighters also have to protect themselves before going out to fight a fire. First they put on their gear and they take this device along with them to protect themselves from inhaling smoke. They always have a PBA on, which means 
an event that they have to go in the building that is burning to rescue someone, uh, do search and rescue, or just to go deeper into the building to find the, 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 the source of the fire, they would put those tanks on so that they could breathe properly. And it'll, a lot of persons will think it's similar to like the scuba diving tanks, but for us, they are the personal protective tanks. He also spoke about the importance of safety. He says during the summer months, many children are left home alone. Inspector Arasker has this warning for parents. We would ask their parents to, uh, if they don't have an older person involved, um, just teach them the basic safety skills. You know, no playing with the matches in the house, no, no candles, um, don't play with the stove. Um, even with flying kites outside, be careful of the electrical lines because if the kite run on the line, that's a, that could be, they could be electrocuted. So we want to be, of parents, be mindful. Another troubling issue, he says, are increased reports of persons leaving gas tanks in their homes. We want to advise persons um, to refrain from that practice um, because you don't know when there's a leak. And with the type of gas that is used, um, you, wouldn't, you, you can't see it. You might have a faint odor, but you won't see it. The only time you, know, you smell LPG gas is when it's nearing the end. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Natalia Hall. Another warning is going out tonight to help safeguard and preserve the innocence of our nation's youth. Police officials say summertime is one of the peak periods when many children become the victims of sexual abuse. Our ZNS News team spoke with Assistant Superintendent of Police Teresita Pinder, and she is appealing to parents to talk to their children about what sexual abuse is and to develop open lines of communication. Sometimes there are no signs. Um, predators come in all shapes, form and sizes. Um, there's, there's no sign. Um, so you as a parent need to be very strict about who you allow around your children. You know, I always advise parents, I say you can't, you don't know who, you don't know who they are, where they are, who they come from, you don't trust anybody with your, with your children. Sometimes family members themselves are not the, the safest place to, to, to leave your children at. But that is where open communication comes in with your child. At the end of the day, at the first day when you leave them there, you'll ask at the end of the day, are you, you feel safe being there? Um, are you comfortable being there? Talk to your children and they will be able to tell you. ASP Pinder is also advising children to never be afraid to confide in someone if they are being sexually abused by a loved one or family friend. I would advise a child or a young person, even if you don't feel comfortable going to a parent with a certain situation, go to a teacher or a pastor, or a neighbor, or another family member who you may feel comfortable talking to, speak to them, or to a best friend, who in turn will, will, will speak on your behalf. She reminds children that it is never acceptable for any individual to touch them inappropriately and emphasize that incidents should be reported as soon as possible. Grand Bahama Health Service is taking steps to address a major issue in the community, substance abuse. A group of master trainers were certified by the United States Embassy, the Ministry of Health and the Sandilands Rehabilitation Center, and they have been mandated to train others in the region. The opening ceremony for the first training session on Grand Bahama was held in the foyer of the Rand Memorial Hospital. Clinical psychologist Michelle Lundy, who was also an international certified addiction professional, says this training program is significant as substance abuse is a global epidemic. What the Colombo plan aims to do is to standardize the way that we treat people affected with this disorder so that we could have continuity of care, so that we could have best practices, so that we could have evidence-based practices. Because a lot of people are treating, and we have a lot of organizations that deal with substance use, but we don't have a standardized curriculum and a standardized pattern for us to be able to follow up and to give them the best care that they can get. Lundy says they are seeing an increase in substance abuse cases at the Grand Bahama Health Services. If we look at patients who come into our dire ward alone at the hospital, 80% of our patients come in initially with a diagnosis of substance use disorder substance use or substance abuse and then that leads to major health problems mentally and physically social economic problems and definitely violence we are hoping that this training could give us better outcomes we could have a steady economy going through because our people will be treated 
Among the trainers are members of the police force, social services, youth leaders and medical personnel. The Universal Treatment Curriculum for Substance Abuse Disorder Training will take place over a three-month period. Stay with us, there's more news right after this break.